Hi, this is Kyoe Shamin, and today we are going to carry on where we left off and we're going to go through a quick explanation of the code but more importantly we're going to have a look at how to write rest assured tests for path parameters. So this is where if your API is expecting certain parameters to be provided in the URL path then we will look at how to write a test for that. But first of all Let's quickly go through what we wrote in the last video so that we have a more solid understanding. So the first thing we're going to look at is the application class. So what is this Spring Boot application annotation for? This annotation essentially allows us to enable auto configuration, uh, component scans, and just general configurations for Spring. We're not going to spend too much looking at Spring. We're not going to use this uh, video series to focus too much on the Spring. We're only going to do very minimal stuff so that we can build the API ourselves. But we do need to have a basic understanding of what's actually happening. So like I said, this annotation is simply used to tell our Spring application what sort of auto wiring or automatically what configuration we want loaded as part of our application. And what this annotation does is that in essence, it is used to allow a lot of configuration that usually requires XML files to happen without the need of those actual resource files. Now let's take a look at our controller. So our controller has two annotations, this REST controller annotation and this request mapping annotation. So what is this REST controller annotation? This is a special type of controller annotation that basically allows our class to automatically use these resource body methods in our public methods. So basically, the REST controller annotation helps us to convert the HTTP messages that we are going to hit to automatically map to the methods in this class. And the request mapping does the same thing. So we will look at this in a little bit more detail as the series progresses, but the request mapping can be used to create HTTP methods such as get or post or delete and so on. So in other words, both of these annotations help us to create endpoint controllers. And finally, let's have a quick look at our controller test. So in our controller test, we had a couple of annotations. Let's talk about these two first really quickly. What these allow us to do is to allow Spring annotations that automatically trace instances of other beans. In other words, when we run this test, these two annotations allow us to automatically boot up instances of say our controllers and anything else we write and provide instances of those objects straight into our class. So this is a really good thing. Usually if you want to say test something, say we wanted to test the application class, and we had another method in here that did something like execute. What we would do is perhaps create something like application equals new application and then call the execute on that application object. We don't have to do anything like that because these two annotations essentially allow us to automatically pull in any instances of those things. So if you remember the last video when we ran a test, and let's do that quickly here, first thing that happens if you have a look is we actually run our API and this API is running in its own instance. In other words, it's running our endpoint in an instance and then it's hitting this endpoint, i.e. our test is hitting that endpoint. So moving forward, when we look at these things here, this is basically part of that configuration. So because we've defined a random port and the reason we defined a random port is because when it spins up this instance of the API, it may spin up an instance on the, on the very same port that we may be running our API on. So because we pass in a random port, all we're doing here is essentially marrying up the random port to the port that we expect our REST assured test to hit also. 
And now finally, let's have a look at the test itself. So here, what we wrote in our last video was a simple line. And in here, what we're essentially saying is get high dot then dot body. So what is actually happening here? So let's break this up a little bit. So it's a little bit more easy to read. So I put the then on a new line and I put the body on a new line. So if you're familiar with BDD or Gherkin approach, having a given when then sort of approach to writing a test, rest assured essentially does that. Rest assured actually has built in Gherkin methods that allow us to do that. So we can write something like given and let's say we just import that in really quickly. So let's say we do a given that we hit a get, then we expect the body to contain this string. So anything after a then is essentially our assertions, or it is part of the then clause in a BDD approach. And anything in the given is essentially is essentially our condition, is what we are saying we want. So you can see that rest short is actually pretty powerful when it comes to writing a test that's more or less self-explanatory. So now what we're going to do is we're going to write a test where we are able to pass in a parameter into our URL. So for example, we have URLs, you might have seen that perhaps look like this, where they take in a parameter within the URL. So you might have something like name equals something. And that something gets assigned to the object of name and that name is then somehow used within the API. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our endpoint and we're just gonna slightly update it to be able to accept, or rather this high endpoint is going to now expect a parameter to be provided. So how can we do that? Well, first of all, within the request mapping, all we're gonna say is we expect a parameter of name to be provided. And it's as simple as that. So here, now that our endpoint is going to expect a parameter, in other words, within the URL, this would look something like hi, question mark, name equals something. This is essentially how that maps. But we need to now actually provide something to this endpoint. And the way we do this is through this annotation called a path variable. I'm just gonna say path variable. And in here, I am going to say that the path variable that we're gonna pass in is going to be of name. And this is going to be a string. And the string instance is going to be name. And that's it. And what we can return is something like hi plus name. So now what this does is this endpoint is now going to expect a variable of name to be provided. And when name gets provided, it's going to be converted into a string. And the mapping that it does is between this path variable annotation here and this. And then it's just going to return hi and that name. So we can actually quickly test this. So let's run our application. And now that our application is running, we're going to go to the terminal and we're just going to do a curl and let's hit that endpoint. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hit the endpoint without providing any parameters. So here you can see that it doesn't even know that such a path exists, which is true. This path doesn't actually exist. We have a path that says hi forward slash something, but nothing else actually exists. So let's hit it again. And this time it's provide a value. And now you can see it's returned hi QHR. So we have now written an endpoint that expects path variables to be provided. So now let's go to our test and update our test to actually provide that. So we're gonna change a few things. First of all, let's change this given to a when. So like I said, rest assured has these given when and then keywords. And in here, we're doing a get. 
let's carry on with the get. And in the get, we are going to say something like QHI. And now, the then, we would basically expect this value to be returned. So let's just copy this and paste it in here. And now when we run this test, this test should pass. So we're just going to run the test. Oop, didn't work. Let me just run it again. Great. So the test passed. Now, just to make sure that we are doing things right, I'm going to make this fade on purpose. So I'm just going to put in a space there. And I'm just going to hit run here. And this test has now failed. So if we go down, we can see that this is what we expected, but this is what we actually got. So we know our endpoint is definitely working and we know the test is definitely picking up the assertion. But let's build on this a little bit, because although we now have actually figured out how to pass in a parameter into our URL, this isn't actually a very clean way of doing it, because the value of this may change and our test structure may change, and it's just not really that pleasant. So let's build this up a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is extract our string into a, its own variable. And in here, I'm just going to call this QHI. And now I'm going to go and actually end up using the whole given when then scenario. So let's start here. So I'm going to say given. Now, the given can accept a few things. And this time we're going to pass in something called a path param. So previously we hard coded in the path param straight into the get. This time we're not going to do this. This time we're going to use this method here called the dot path param method. And in here we can provide essentially objects of what we want to pass in. So I'm going to pass in name because that is what our endpoint is expecting. And then in here, I'm going to give this a value. And the value I'm going to give is this name here. And now, as part of the when, so the reason why we have a red line is because we don't have a dot here. As part of the get, we're not going to hard code this in anymore. Instead, what we're going to do is pull in the value by using the curly braces. So this is now pulling in this value directly. And in here, we're going to remove this. And we, for the moment, we can just do something like name. And now when we run this, this test should pass. But what is essentially happening is we are saying, given we have a path param, where we're passing in a parameter called name, which has a value of name. And the value of name is QHRM. When we perform a get and hit this endpoint by passing in this parameter, then the body should contain high and then the value of that name. So let's run this test. Great, and the test passed. But who wants to see a passing test? Let's see it failing and let's see what it looks like. So I'm just going to put in an extra space here because this should then result in a fail. And let's run this test one more time. Great, and the test failed. And if we have a look at the failure, then we can see that what we expected is high QHI, which obviously has two spaces in here, but what we got back was a single space. Now we can clean this up a little bit more. Instead of th doing this, which isn't necessarily really clean. We can just uh, do a quick string format. So we can do something like string dot uh, format, and in here we can say something like um, so it's high uh, percentage uh, s I think it was, and then in here we're just going to say name. So if you're not familiar with what string format does, it's a really cool way of adding multiple strings together without having the uh, plus. Uh, operator on the strings. It basically makes you uh, 
it makes it easier to manipulate your strings. So now, nothing's really changed. If we just run this test, we should get back the same result. Uh, rather, our test should now pass. So let's run it one more time. And our test has passed. So that's really cool. That's really great. So let's quickly review what we've done in this video. So in this video, we've gone over what these annotations mean. We've gone over what the Spring Boot application annotation means, the arrest controller, the request mapping, and what the annotations within our controller test mean. We have also updated our API to now expect path parameters. And within our controller, we have updated our only test for now to pass in these path parameters into our URL where we have abstracted out the information and we are then able to assert on the test. And that's it. That's it for this video, folks. So we have spent probably half of the video going through Spring stuff. And I know that it might be slowing us down the rest assured. But the whole point of me writing and creating my videos in this method is so that in the future, you don't have to rely on any black box APIs. They may exist, they may not exist. Doing it this way really will help you to enforce exactly how APIs are built and it will help you to write better tests because you know exactly what's happening. So the code that I've written in this video, you'll be able to find it on my blog site and the link to the blog site will be in the description below. Uh, make sure you subscribe, share my video and leave a comment before moving on to the next one. It's always great if you leave comments. I know exactly where you are. I know exactly how things are going and it helps me to create better videos because I know exactly what to expect. Many thanks for watching and I shall see you in the next one.